everyone's face. It seems every time we have a baptism, even though the water's cold, the weather's warm. Amen, right? Because I touched it and it's cold, so... We are so thankful. Last week I had mentioned that we had planned this, and I like to do baptisms. There's somebody for that, and I met Colleen for the first time who had found her way to Northgate. She mentioned she had been there before a couple years ago, but felt that she was to come back. And Colleen said to me, I, I don't, didn't remember her, sorry, Colleen, but um, I don't have the best memory going. She said, I was here a couple of years ago, but you mentioned baptism. And she said, life has, you know, I grew up a Christian, but I've kind of fallen away. But I want to come back to the Lord, and I want to proclaim that in baptism next Sunday. So I said, well, thank you, Jesus. And I said, we'll talk this week, and I called Colleen and heard her story, and I'm so thankful today that we can witness and support Colleen as she proclaims her desire to be her belief and her desire to walk with Jesus. Amen? So those of you who may be new, or it's a good reminder that baptism doesn't mean... Um, it's not a religious thing that means, well, now I'm a Christian. Baptism simply is proclaiming outwardly what we believe in our heart. We have sinned in our life. Everyone here is imperfect. And we need forgiveness. And Jesus came and died for our sins, for our mistakes, for our imperfection. And so... The Bible would say we were old in our sin. But what happens in baptism? It's like it's buried under the water, the ground, and we come up new, righteous, forgiven people. Amen? And that's all we're saying is we believe that Jesus has taken the old imperfection. He died on the cross. I believe in him, and I come up the new man, righteous in him and praise God for what he's done for us and what a reminder this morning if you've had a bad week you've slipped up you know it we are sins because of him so you say well what are the qualifications do you have to take a class well the Bible says you don't have to take a class we know that in Acts chapter 8 when the Ethiopian eunuch came to Philip and he was reading the scriptures, and Philip explained about Jesus, just kind of what I did right there. And they see some water, and the eunuch says, well, what would stop me from being baptized? And Philip said to him, nothing if you believe with your whole heart. That's the only qualification, belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? So I'm going to ask Colleen to come up, and I'm going to ask Jim because I don't want to leave her in our beautiful, I don't know, baptismal. We're the only church probably who has a feeding trough with, yeah, some sort of a cloth put across the front of it to masquerade what it truly is. But I'm going to ask Colleen three questions. I'm going to ask her, and if you don't hear, or you don't hear the questions because we're outside, whether she believes Jesus is God whether she believes that Jesus came to this earth, died for her sins, and rose again. And thirdly, I will ask her if she desires to follow Jesus the rest of her life. I'm not saying, are you going to be perfect? I'm not saying that. When you say, are you ever going to sin again? I'm not saying that because we all do that. I'm saying, do you desire? Is it your desire to walk with him? Amen. And hopefully she'll say yes. And we will be ready to go and, and do that. So let's, you ready? She's ready.
Okay, before we go to the teaching, one other fun thing. We have had the joy of having two students from other countries join us for the majority of the year. Maeve there, the Biltons have joined us these last few months. It's been a joy to see Maeve with them. And Lucia, and probably you guys have met Lucia. She's been here 10 months. And I can say she's been to youth group too. She's an absolute blessing. Big smile and just a joy in youth group to hear her pray and encourage the other kids. But this is their last Sunday. And so we want to send them out with a good body of Christ prayer that the Lord will bless them as they go back home. Amen. So come on up and maybe Jim and Sharon, Tabitha. Okay, this is great. This is the way we do it. We bring them from other countries, right? So, amen. Tim and Tabitha, Jim and Sharon. Just awesome job loving these girls, amen? And there is going to be lots of fruit. God is faithful, and we have these opportunities to love people. What a joy. So let's pray now. Lord, thank you for Lucia and May. You love them so much. And I pray right now that they would sense and feel and know and think about your love. Lord, we pray as they go back home that they would remember all that they've learned about you. That they would grow, that they would find churches and places where they can fellowship and be encouraged in Jesus. Lord, this is a really big world. With lots of people, and you know that, billions and billions of people, many nationalities, and many people need you. So we pray as they go out that you would use them where we will not go. And you would just shine a blessing as we sang this morning upon their lives, Lord Jesus. My pray as they go. I'm sure there'll be a little sadness too for them and for the homes that they leave. We pray that your Holy Spirit would bring comfort, but we know there'll be happiness in their homes as they see their families again. So Lord, we ask you to put your hand over all of these things and we give you thanks for the opportunity and the blessing to meet and to love people. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Yeah, we do have a picnic after. We have hamburgers and hot dogs, and people have brought salads. So please, if you can, stay. We'll just kind of move to the backyard where the barbecues are, and we have the table set up on the deck. We'd love for you to stay. And this evening, there is a hymn sing at Don and Marg's. Uh, they would love to have you. So if you're interested, Don's there under the tent with the hat. Come see him, and he can tell you the directions to that. Their desire is to see the body of Christ come together to worship Jesus. Amen. So a regular week at Northgate prayer walk on Wednesday. That's what we're summer schedule pared down to. But if you're free on Wednesday, we'd love to see you. So Lord, as we spend a few minutes in your word, we pray that you would bless it this morning. Amen. So we're in our summer series of kids. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Rebecca. Sunday school kids, yes, feel free to head on out there and play 
with each other and maybe the kitties that are back there too. <laughs> so we got everything, chickens, cats, dogs. Yeah. Yeah, kids, go enjoy. So the summer series. Wisdom. Looking at books of wisdom, Proverbs, a little bit of Ecclesiastes, the book of Job, practical ways to apply God's word through the wisdom books. Last week we talked about practically how God is our father on Father's Day. And for young parents, encourage you to watch that. Or old parents, if you're interested, to be encouraged as Amy and I talked about that together. So originally when we thought of this series, I brought it to the leadership. And I asked for their ideas on the topics. Didn't want it just to be my ideas. And one of the ideas that came forth was just practically the idea of forgiveness. Forgiveness. And so... Oftentimes we think of forgiveness, as I'm going to mention, as a one-time event, but I'm titling this little teaching, Living in Forgiveness. Not just forgiving past, living in forgiveness. And to be honest, when I got this topic, there's not a whole lot mentioned in the book of Proverbs. <laughs> you got to dig a little deep. Obviously, there's a lot in the New Testament, and we'll touch on that. But there are some things. And I am sure most of you have heard teachings or sermons on this topic of forgiveness and its old hat. But to be honest, as a pastor and being with people, we can never stop hearing about this topic. Even though we know in our mind the struggle with the seeds of bitterness and the pain of holding on to offense is destroying relationships and families. We can never stop hearing about forgiveness. I just think we should pray again. Lord, would you just bring your Holy Spirit to open and soften our hearts into those areas that we've locked pretty tight? This teaching means nothing unless your Holy Spirit will move this morning. Would you take the words and bring healing and bring life instead of pain and medicating with sin? Lord Jesus, we ask you in your name. Amen. Proverbs 17 verse 9. In the New Living Translation says this. Love prospers when a fault is forgiven, but dwelling on it separates close friends. In the Amplified Version, he who covers and forgives an offense seeks love, but he who repeats it or gossips about the matter separates friends. Just a couple quick things before I touch on that. How do we define forgiveness? Because I think sometimes we have a misunderstanding of what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is letting go of a debt that someone has caused in your life through sin. Someone has hurt you. And it's easy to want revenge or to hold on to the pain and hold them to account. But forgiveness is simply saying, I let go of that. I release that. And we know that's what Jesus did for us. Because we caused him pain. 
And Christ through the cross released us from the debt that we owe. Jesus is pretty serious about this and said it's not an option, it's a must. Forgiveness is not trust. Forgiveness does not mean that I now all of a sudden trust you. Forgiveness does not mean I don't have boundaries. Forgiveness does not mean I have to be your best friend. But forgiveness means I'm not going to hold you responsible in terms of the debt I'm carrying in myself. Sometimes, as I mentioned previously, if someone has done something, we say, I forgive you. But I want to tell you again, as I mentioned before, that forgiveness is not a moment, but a lifestyle. Because the reality is, there's lots of triggers in life that can bring back that pain again and again and again. And I believe that's why Jesus said to Peter, seven times 70. How many times do I have to forgive my brother? And oftentimes we think it's separate ordeals or different people. Well, what if it's the same sin and the same person? The answer is the same. Our lifestyle is one to let go of the debt. And some of us say in our heads we've forgiven, but we're holding people to the burden in our heart right here. And we haven't let them go. And how do we know? By how you behave. I'm not saying you have to be best friends, but if your heart starts pounding and you get angry every time you see someone, there's a problem. You haven't let go. Our verse today is pretty clear that love is the motivation and love will prosper when we forgive. God loved the world. Amen. That's why he sent Jesus to die on the cross. It was the motivation of God to send Jesus to forgive our sins. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 31 and 32 says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. See motivation? God, Jesus, forgiven, we, to be like Him, have to do the same thing. It's a challenge. It's not an option. Even in the Lord's Prayer, as we've been taught to pray, we say, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. You see, the Lord's Prayer and prayers like that aren't just something that we say out of rote and routine because we learned it in school. It's the reality of living it in a lifestyle when the pain is triggered to say, no, I'm going to let that go. You might say to me, well, what if the person doesn't ask? What if they haven't changed? I told you, you didn't have to be their best friend. I told you, you didn't have to trust them. But even if they didn't ask, you have to forgive. Because God made you and he knows you and he wants to release you from the pain that you are putting on yourself. 
Come on. Amen. God made you and he knows that you are not meant to carry that burden because it finds its way in other anger and sin and the seeds of bitterness just destroy. And I would guess to venture, I think I was talking to Doug this week and he said all his counseling probably comes down to knowing God's love and being able to forgive others. Now, counselors take a lot of ways to get there. They want to get into your childhood, and that's all good. But the final result is, are you willing to know you are loved and forgiven and to forgive others? Because all the pain and all that we get involved in and all our issues stem from that. Knowing God's love, Letting it prosper through us to forgive others. God's desire is for our health, our emotional health, and for healthy relationships. And He has provided a way for us to prosper. Amen? <laughs> yeah, I guess. I'm... This is big news, folks. <laughs> because as much as we don't talk about it, the reality is it's a spiritual battle that most of us face. Did you hear me? As much as we don't talk about it, this is is a spiritual battle. This is warfare, and Satan wants to steal, kill, and destroy. And he wants to wiggle his way into your life by showing you how someone else has hurt you. And he wants you to hold on to that, and he wants you to stew, and then he wants you to medicate through all sorts of garbage thinking which leads to garbage behavior and it steals your joy and it is ugly ugly i am so thankful that we have a god who wants us to be healthy and he has given us everything we need. And he's explained in this spiritual battle, even in James 3, when he talks about wisdom, which was from the Proverbs and prospering. If you know that section in James 3 where it talks about wisdom, wisdom isn't selfish. It doesn't desire its own. It doesn't hold on. Wisdom is pure. Wisdom is peaceable. Wisdom is willing to yield. That brings forth a harvest of righteousness in your life. No one here can say they haven't been hurt. And I'm not here to say what is big or small. Because it's big to you. It could be, I, you know, I think back and think how I could have felt rejected by friends when I was young. And you say, oh, that's, that's Pastor Dan, that's nothing, get over it. But it was real to me. It was real to me. And thus, between God and me, it's really real. And his indication is, Dan, don't hold on. Not in my selfishness, and not in my desire for myself, not in the lies of earthly wisdom, but I need to turn to his wisdom, which is pure and peaceable. It forgives. That is true wisdom. That is true love. It's not keeping a record of wrongs. It's not holding on when you're triggered about your spouse or your parents or a friend. If something happens and you're right back where you don't want to be. No. We look to Christ in the truth of who he has made us. And I can tell you, one of the greatest weapons we have 
is receiving God's forgiveness and offering it to others. The world doesn't know how to handle that. People don't know how to handle that. But when it talks in 2 Corinthians 10 of spiritual weapon, the greatest weapon is the cross. It's not you praying more. It's not you reading your Bible more. It's the cross. And believing what Christ has done and letting it flow through you so love can prosper. The weapon is His weapon, not your effort. Come on. We're outside. I can't hear you. Every morning, I usually try to have a little silence. I have a little timer on my phone. I put it on my lap. And it's kind of funny that when it ends, there's drums and I don't know. You know, on the phone, they have different ring tones and Mine's drums, and Amy always says, what are you doing, going to tribal council on Survivor? Or... But I have come to found, find that those few minutes where I purpose to silence are crucial to my day. I read God's word first. I'm reading through. I pray. And then it's time to listen. I set that timer. And I did that yesterday. And I said, Lord, I want to listen to you. I'm, I, I want you to use this message. But I want to hear you, Lord. And it was just in a moment. He, as I listened, I heard God's word come to me in Matthew where it says, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden. And I never looked at this verse like that. Like, what does this have to do with forgiveness? Again, come all who are, are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. For I am humble, gentle, and meek. You will find rest for your soul. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. And often we think of tiredness with this. Maybe you're physically tired. or But there's many of us who are emotionally exhausted because we haven't forgiven. And we don't tell people, but it's coming out in our behavior. And we're so exhausted, and what we need is true rest. And if you see that unforgiveness like a heavy load on your back, what this verse is saying Jesus wants to take it off your back. He wants you to be like him. He wants you to yoke, which means to walk together. You see, he's humble. He's gentle. He's meek. He's forgiving. And he's saying, learn from me. Well, what did he do? How can we learn from him in his meekness, humility, his gentleness, what did he do? Even to those who were crucifying him, he said, Father, forgive them. And he says, come, be like me. Yoke yourself to me. Learn from me, and I will give you rest. Now put that again with forgiveness. He's saying this morning, are you coming in emotionally? Not forgiving someone. Holding on to bitterness. I know, I know, I know what the Bible says. I know, I know what God says. No, you don't. 
Because when we know it, we apply it. Amen? There's a flow. There's a flow as I learn from Christ. I release. And I'm set free to allow love to prosper. And joy is the result this morning. (laughs) And he says to each one of you, I want to give you newness of life and joy and rest and freedom. And that's what you really want. Come to me. Do you hear him this morning? Come to me, he's saying. Let it go. I've forgiven you. And you can let it flow. Am I saying trust? No. Am I saying that's a good person? No. Am I saying that you have to be best friends? No. But I am saying that you will be set free. And the second half, You know you haven't forgiven if you're always talking to someone about it. Or when it comes up. That's what it says right in the verse, Proverbs 17. The gossip, the chatter. But in reality, it separates you from God and it separates you from others. And we can learn from the wisdom literature to be like Jesus to be set free for his glory. Amen? So, Father God, we thank you today. First and foremost, as we celebrated with the baptism, we celebrate your forgiveness. Maybe there's somebody, I usually say in this room, but on this lawn, who's never received the forgiveness of the Lord Jesus Christ. This isn't a religious exercise. This is just the reality of saying, God, you love me. You've forgiven me. And you have a choice to receive that or reject that. The choice to do it on your own or receive the love and forgiveness of Jesus Christ. Oh, I'll tell you, he loves you so much today. So much. You've never received that. The Bible says, believe with your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus came and died, rose again, and you will be saved. You will be set free. And that's something between you and God. I pray that you would accept his love today. For the rest of us, this lifestyle of forgiveness, we have no chance without the power of the Holy Spirit within us. The Holy Spirit to point us to Jesus and what Jesus has done for us. So Holy Spirit, would you come now and remind us the truth of your word, of what you've done for us. And Lord, even in this moment, we ask for your help if there's anything or anyone that we need to forgive. We don't have to make a big spectacle about it. We don't even really have to tell anybody. But Lord, right now, we release that debt For the pain they've caused. We let go. As you did. We say father. Thank you for your forgiveness. 
And we forgive those who have hurt us. May love prosper in our lives as we forgive the faults of others. May agape prosper. Lord, we're going to be offended. We're going to be hurt. But may we be like you and let go. So good, Lord. You're so good to us. And pray this in your precious and your holy name. Amen. Amen. So we usually do pray together. Um, I'm thinking we're going to barbecue together. (laughs) But maybe take a few minutes, just five minutes. If you feel comfortable, maybe with your family or someone else, just turn. And uh, let's pray for one another. And in five, seven minutes, uh, I will pray to conclude our service. And it will give time for the guys to start cooking uh, the stuff as we pray together. So let's do that now. And we'll close up in about five to ten minutes. Turn your chairs and find someone to fellowship with.